Hi, and welcome to this webinar with me, Johan Göransson, uh, Product Manager of Agency9. For the next 20-25 minutes, I'll be talking about an exciting new concept that we are currently developing for managing and configuring data sources for usage in 3D applications. So here's uh, what I'll be talking about today. I'll give a brief introduction of, uh, of Agency 9 and our products for those of you who are unfamiliar with what we do. And then also give a background to why we feel it's important to develop this, this data management concept. Uh, and then I'll go into discussing the types of data, the sources, the files and the services that you can, can connect and configure with Data Manager and how to configure it, the things that you will be able to do. And then finally, uh, just briefly discuss how to use it in applications. If you have uh, any questions, feel free to ask them in the chat. I'll try and, and, and answer, but if I, if I miss something, I'll get back to it after the webinar. So a little bit about Agency9. We are a Swedish software development uh, company. We have been around since 2003 and we have been doing 3D on the web ever since. Um, and we are developing two products, 3D Maps, SDK and City Planner. And our focus has always been to build user-friendly uh, and powerful 3D applications applications that more than experts users uh, can get value from. So that's what we're trying to, to do. We're trying to broaden 3D use to more than just yes, expert users. We have been, been working with uh, streaming 3D geodata for more than 10 years. So we've been doing this for quite some time. Uh, our first project 10 years ago was actually to visualize the entire country of Sweden in 3D on the web. So we, right from the start, we have been working with massive 3D models and, and big, and um, a bunch of amounts. Uh, so we, most of our customers are, are municipalities and, uh, and agencies. And we have customers in Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Finland, and uh, a few countries outside as well. The 3D Maps SDK, it's a 3D visualization platform with developer APIs and uh, data processing tools. So we have developer development partners that can use our platform to build their own custom applications uh, for the web and for desktop and for mobile. The, uh, the visualization engine is capable of rendering massive 3D models uh, where we can mix train models, or images, imagery, 3D buildings, photo mesh data sets, and point clouds, vector data, and we can texture WMS and use WFS, and uh, we have animation capabilities and, and much more. So the, the engine is very mature and it's it's custom built to suit our needs and the use case that we're, we're, we're developing for. Uh, so it's been developed ever since 2003 in different iterations, different different versions. Uh, it's completely developed by, by Agency 9, uh, as well as the content pipeline with the processing tools and, and, and that sort of things. So it's a streaming solution, meaning we can visualize entire cities or countries or the world, basically. The data processing tools can take massive data uh, chunks and and divide it into smaller tiles and then stream it uh, uh, with using WebGL and HTML5. So there are no installations, just pure pure web. On top of the 3D Maps SDK, we have built the City Planner application which is a, a cloud solution to visualize and share 3D scenes. It's primarily built to support the, the most common 3D tasks of, a, of, of an urban planner, 
and for visualizing changes to the city. Um, so a lot of effort has been put into building the interface as easy to use as possible uh, to support those, those common tasks. Again, there are no installations. It's just you just access it with your web browser. Uh, and that means that's both for the editing users that put together and use the city planner, but also for uh, sharing with the, with the general public. There are no installations on, on either, either side. The price model is also built to, to be scalable. So uh, we, it scales from a, from a single user up to an organization using the enterprise with all the features and all the, all the stuff. Uh, we include some data in the service, but generally our customers like to link and upload their own city model, use their own terrain models and up the, the OpenStreetMap 3D that's included in the, in the product. So in City Planner, we can, of course, mix 3D city models and photo meshes and train and all that stuff that, that 3D maps uh, enables us to do. But the editor also has features to, to upload CAD models. Uh, you can do sketching in 3D with simple volumes. You can connect uh, to WMS services, add points of interests, interest uh, dots that, uh, that contains images, text and videos or even web pages. Uh, there are features to add survey forms if an urban planner is doing a dialogue project or public hearing uh, phases in a project, they can use the survey form to ask uh, the general public what they feel about the project or, or just get ideas for how to develop a certain area. There are also, for the more advanced users, there's scripting and customization op options. So you can, you can make the interface your own and you can add your own scripts to make it even more advanced and, and more powerful. Uh, so there's, there's tools to do shadow analysis directly in the, in the entire city model. We can render an elevation heat map that lets you compare different uh, altitudes in the model. Maybe you're planning to build something and you can co compare this building to already existing buildings around it with, with the elevation uh, rendering mode. And of course there's measurements. You can export uh, cutouts from the 3D model. It's all built into the, the City Planner tool. Uh, and the output can be online in, the, in any web browser, so you can share it with your team, just with uh, inviting them to the project or, or sending a link to them. But you can also, again, invite citizens and the general public to view your project and your proposal for, for urban plans uh, on desktop, on iPads, on mobile. For City Planet, we have built an offline application uh, that's custom made for for gaming application gaming uh, desktop uh, computers and uh, touch monitors so you can navigate with touch uh, super user friendly and engaging in for instance in a in a showroom experience uh, and city plan can also be used in vr mode uh, either the high end version with oculus and htc vive or the low end mobile uh, panoramic vr uh, use case with, with the cardboard and, and that sort of things. So a typical 3D world in, in 3D maps or in, in City Planner or in any other 3D application is basically, it consists of, of a combination of different data sources that, that produces the final, final image. So you'll have, uh, you'll have, uh, Sorry, lost the thing. You'll have a train model that comes from maybe an aerial scan of the area, provided as a geotiff, and then auto imagery, maybe it's provided from a service, a WMS service uh, in this case. So that creates the, the base, the train with the textured uh, auto imagery on top of it. And then adding to that might be uh, mapped building footprints in vector and then lidar points that creates uh, uh, well 
that's used to calculate the, the altitude or the height of the, each building. Or it could come from an attribute from, from that vector data as well. But then that, that building height is used to extrude to a certain, certain height for each building. And maybe you have vector data points, uh, again from an aerial scan, where you know every tree insertion point, and you have attributes that, that tell which tree, which height, uh, which diameter, and, and that sort of stuff. And then places a, a generalized model, a 3D model, uh, representing that data in that position. And maybe there's a local photo mesh created from a, from a UAV, from a drone, um, that's also added to the visualization. So here we have drone data, images that might have been processed with uh, uh, Augisoft or Context Capture or something like that. Uh, that's also fitted into the, the, the unified view and, and the, the visualization. And finally, the hand model 3D to represent uh, maybe an urban plan, maybe some development, maybe there's landmarks that you want to highlight with a higher level of detail than the rest of the, of the area. So that's a lot of data. Uh, there's a lot of, a lot of sources, lots of formats, lots, lots of tools involved in, in creating these unified views, lots of data providers as well. So uh, handling your today, data today, Typically, there's a lot of uh, manual file sending for processing and then putting things together. Maybe there's exports from a GIS system to some format that the, that the visualization engine handles. But you have to do a lot of, of manual uh, handling to fit this all together. And, and there's every step of the way is basically an expert tool that's difficult to use for, for an ordinary person you have to go you have to take courses in the, in every tool and, and le really understand what you're doing before you can do this sort of merging and cutting and and putting together uh, different data sources into a combined multi-source terrain or city model so that's of course time consuming and it's labor intensive so that can lead to that you maybe not update your 3d model uh, as often as you as you'd like uh, you, you you might do it every every year you might do it every couple of years when you get new order imagery and then you create a new uh, 3d model of the area and there might be problems if you're doing a lot of uh, exports from different databases and then using files in the end there might be problems when you update a, a new building when something's built or when you're when when something is demolished how do you uh, how do you update that in every single system that you're using in every application? Uh, so it's current and not just a, a snapshot from from a year ago. And when you do this sort of local surveying from a, for a project, or you might be you might be creating a specific train for a, a specific project that you, that you want to visualize. You might use a, a drone to create a, a photo mesh of a local area. Then there's all often difficulties to merge it with the citywide terrain and the citywide building model uh, uh, data structure. Uh, again, because it's expert tools, uh, but also it's massive da data sets, which are very difficult to handle on a workstation. If you want to process a if you want to infuse a local photo mesh uh, model into a citywide photo mesh model, that's a lot of processing and, and your workstation won't be able to handle it. So you need specific hardware to, to be able to do these sort of tasks. And if you have object data, for instance, a, a smart 3D city model in CDGML or, or any other uh, structure with, with attributes linked to the geometry, then you, you want to make sure that those attributes are current and not just a snapshot again. So you can, you can use that data from the 3D model uh, to query some database or some service and get more information that's actually current. Uh, and if you have attributes, you want to be able to do thematic rendering of 3D models from these attributes. You want to be able to highlight the buildings that are, are of a certain age, 
maybe or or maybe usage or something like that so again it's important to keep the connection between your geometry to your database and your services that that are uh, that has this sort of information that we can use to highlight buildings and if there's a long update cycle of data that can lead to inaccuracies both in the visualization but also uh, when planning if if your planners are are working on inaccurate data or, or old data uh, that might lead to, to errors. And if you're using your, your 3D uh, data model in a public um, um, in a public way, if you're sharing it to the general public, they're gonna notice if the data model is two years old and some building that they're, they are neighbor to are not in the model and they're gonna complain. So it's important to have accurate and, and current data. So that's why we started to uh, think about this concept and we're, and, uh, and build the data manager uh, concept that, that we're currently developing. So the goal of, 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 of this development is to support our users who want complete control of their geodata, both their processes from gathering from the sources sources, but also how they want to use it, uh, how they want to store it, do, we, do they want to store it in-house or in the cloud. Uh, we want to support them, those people who want to be self-reliant um, on, on, on their whole geodata process, basically. And since we, we focus on, on building easy-to-use uh, tools, we, try, we want to build that here as well. We want to make something that's very complex uh, and make it easy to use, easy to update, manage, to combine data sets, to cut data sets and, and to query it. And again, support uh, both a hosted data uh, in, in the cloud that we, we host or connect directly to, a, to an in-house hosted data source at the customers to give flexibility on how, how a, a customer uh, sets up their, their geodata structure. <coughs> And finally, we, we also want this to be uh, not an endpoint and not only serving city planner and 3D maps applications. So we want to be able to integrate with third party tools to do this sort of things as well, both visualizing, but also managing the data from third party tools. So we are looking closely at standards and ways to, to make it open with, with entry points to the data manager. So, if we begin from the sources, you're collecting data from satellite, air data, UAV, uh, you're doing surveying from, from the ground or, or hand mapped. <clears throat> then, you can import those to the data manager as, as files, services, or connect directly to the database. Uh, so you can import 3D models as, as different file formats, OGC standards, terrain models, um, auto imageries, photo meshes in diff from different vendors, different tools. <clears throat> you can even upload point clouds and use that for different things in data manager. And, uh, and vector data. You can also collect, connect services to data manager and use that to combine your data sources. So we have, we support uh, both services for terrain data, but also for, for map, raster and uh, auto images through a bunch of different services. <clears throat> we support the S3 image service, the digital globe image service. We even support Bing and Google layout services. <clears throat> and we're closely monitoring the development of, uh, of 3D services that we can support as well. We like standards, we want to use standards, so we're looking closely to development of 3D standards. Uh, spatial databases 
can be connected any all data uploaded to to the data manager will be stored in a spatial database to be enable querying and that sort of things but if you have a, your own database uh, we can connect directly to that if you <clears throat> with, with with some configuration you can store your data in a 3d city database structure uh, that's built on after the city gml uh, structure but any custom database layout will do as long as data is stored as geometry we can use it so here's a, a an image from the prototype um, well the the data manager lets you upload files it lets you configure the databases and services in this ui uh, and then you can combine terrains, you can combine ortho imageries. There'll be settings to filter colors and uh, to, to define no data areas. <clears throat> we will support different uh, meters per pixel uh, resolution of your data. So you can use a lower resolution uh, terrain with a higher resolution terrain, for instance. Uh, there'll be features to, that lets you <coughs> cut data so you might want to use a, a certain area or one data set and then uh, cut it and combine it with another so there'll be tools for doing that but you can also use vector data to, to upload and, and use uh, for doing that uh, data management will also support doing coordinate transformation <coughs> So you can transform from one um, coordinate system to another and combine it into the same coordinate system. Uh, it will be able to do to insert three objects based on train elevation. So it will adjust the insert point automatically. Uh, and, and finally, and you'll be able to do partial updates. <clears throat> you might want to add, uh, a, a do a bulk import of a new area with 3D buildings, or maybe you're adding a, a project terrain <clears throat> to an existing terrain uh, that's prepared. So you can do that. You'll be able to do static terraforms and modifications to our terrain. So you can you can completely <clears throat> adjust an existing terrain with with tools that you you have in in Data Manager. And then you'll be able to see every update and, and uh, you can go back in, in time. <clears throat> and then you can export data sets as files for offline use uh, for our Citibank customers. And output them as HREX streams or OGC services. Uh, we'll implement WMS support first. Any, any tile that's been accessed uh, through the data manager will be cached on the cloud for performance reasons. So the first time a user uh, queries a certain area, there will be a, a, a query down to the source if it's in a database or from to the VMS. But then that tile will be pre prepared and cached on our server for, <clears throat> for better performance for the next user. We're also looking to be able to do things like uh, matching or, or setting a color on a 3D object from, from attributes that's stored in a database or stored in the, in the object itself. And generate 3D objects and trees from vector data based on attributes again. So you could add, have a tree database in a, uh, somewhere and we can connect data manager to it and automatically generate trees and 3D objects for lampposts and that sort of uh, street furniture automatically based on attributes 
Uh, things we're also looking to add in the future is on the fly uh, extrusion of, of LOD1 buildings from Vector. Again, footprints and, and laser data or attributes, we can create these LOD1 buildings automatically in, in Data Manager. Or if you, on the other hand, have roof structures, uh, 3D roof structures, maybe mapped, then there will be tools to extrude them down to the ground to form 3D buildings. And another thing that we might add in the future is, is automatic uh, color from auto imagers. So we can set the color of a building matched from a mean value of the, of the auto images of that building. Now for, for uh, uh, updating, simple updating, you can use City Planner. There will be a connection in City Planner to these data sets that you prepare in Data Manager. So if you want to add a 3D model to your, your 3D city database, you can do that using City Planner and the easy to use tools. You just import the CAD model, place it, or if it's your reference, it will be in the, in the correct spot automatically. And then just add it to the, to the database and, and commit it. Same if you want to remove or update a building, maybe there's a texture that's misaligned or something, then you can download it, uh, fix the problem, and then replace the building in the 3D city model. Uh, the same thing will be able to, you can do that directly to the database with a third party tool. So you can, you can access the databases where the 3D city model is stored. Uh, if it's in, in the cloud or if it's in, in, in your uh, structure, you can do it directly to the database and, and with some other tool. Uh, and there will be uh, SQL access to to the database as well, so you can do queries for for that building. And when when the when you have made your updates, the the cache is refreshed and the city model is updated everywhere. <clears throat> now, when you have prepared these these models, you can of course use them in, in City Planner and three D maps to perform these uh, analysis. And these visualizations um, and do communicate urban plans and do dialogue projects and that that sort of things. Uh, it'll be updated in a, every project because it will be connected to the da same data manager sources. So if you make an update somewhere, it will uh, automatically show everywhere. But again. This is not intended only for city planner three D maps. Uh, data that's that's uh, um, in data manager will be able to be accessed from other applications as well that support uh, OGC standards. So again, we're starting with a WMS standard, but in the future we'll we'll add other standards as well. So you can consume data from the data manager in in via other standards. So that's it. That's uh, It's a brief introduction to the concept. I hope it was uh, understandable. If you want to learn more about the concept, uh, contact me or contact us and, and we can discuss if we if this can be something that you might be interested in, in trying and using. Uh, and we'd appreciate if you can help us improve these webinars. So, uh, so feel free to fill out the webinar, uh, the survey on this link or use the QR code here. It's just a couple of questions uh, about what you th thought about the, the webinar and the content. Are there any questions? So question from, from Patrick from the picture uh, about VR panoramas. Yeah, so <clears throat> right now in City Planner you can export VR panorama images, uh, but then you have to use some other viewer to put together the, the tour. We are definitely planning to, uh, to integrate that better, to build our own uh, panorama viewer that you can use in, in low-end uh, 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 devices, mobile and cardboard. 
<coughs> so that that's something that we are hoping to add uh, before the summer. For 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 my Swedish listeners, uh, uh, we will be at at the Kartdagarna next week. There's a GIS conference here in Sweden. Uh, so if you want to talk more about the data manager concept or anything else, then you're feel free to to come and, and talk to me about it. If not, I thank you for your attention and for for attending this webinar. Um, again, I hope you you'll take your time to fill out the survey and uh, and contact us if you want to learn more about the data manager concept or in city planner in general or what we can do for your uh, 3D strategy of your city and your data. See you next time. Thank you.